Hello, good morning to every, everyone. I'm Sandra Limani and I'm going to talk about 3D anthropometry applied to product design. So nowadays there are uh, different solutions in uh, the market to create an individual 3D body avatar of a customer. And these solutions can range from a 3D body scanner that can be um, found in a shop to enhance the experience of the customer. Uh, we have also mobile applications. We will see later on uh, a speech from my colleague Juan Carlos about these kind of uh, uh, devices. Um, and we have also the possibility to create a 3D avatar from uh, a small uh, measurements, age, uh, weight, height. And depending on the application, the accuracy and the accessibility of the data, we can use one of them. What we are obtaining from this kind of uh, tools is a 3D model of, of the customer, of the person. And to do this, we are using a data-driven reconstruction tool that it learned from a big databases created in the past in uh, different research projects. And from this 3D model, we can extract uh, different metrics for these applications, like the body measurements that are used, for example, in ready-to-wear clothes or an internal skeleton to move or to animate the, um, the uh, avatar. So uh, we can change the post to use the avatar in sitting posture, for example, and we can animate it for uh, use it in a simulation environment. Considering uh, this uh, state of the art, I'm going to present which could be the flow of the data in an ideal context. So user can create the single uh, 3D body avatar. And now there are many companies that are um, providing and creating new businesses uh, to, to provide um, services and products based on this da data. Uh, one of them is uh, the pioneer on, on, on the use of uh, the 3D body avatar, because this is the clothing industry that are offering uh, made to measure uh, clothes based on uh, uh, digital, digital anthropometry. And there are also many initiatives in uh, the context of size recommendations. Uh, in the last year, uh, there are many appli new applications in uh, fitness tracking and also uh, they are offering the possibility to do measurements in different days to see how the body is changing with an uh, export plan, for example. In the sector of health, for uh, the design of orthotics or for uh, nutritional plans. There are also using this kind of uh, information. And um, in, in the environment of, uh, of the factory, of the workplace, the ergonomics is using anthropometry from many years to adapt the workplace and for safety, as well as the personal protective equipment that are also important in, in that context. And finally, the sector of the animation and the virtual reality, it's starting to use uh, this uh, 3D uh, uh, personalized avatars. So these are different contexts and different situations that users can create the avatar. And this repository uh, can be used for uh, uh, secondary purposes, um, like a database. So we can anonymize this data and to use it in an aggregate way to support the design of good fitting products for the mass market. And to do this, we need to use additional tools for the exploitation of this kind of data. These tools uh, can be the anthropometric tables. This is the traditional uh, anthropometry that uh, are used to improve the design of the product are statistical summaries with uh, uh, percentiles, mean, and so, so on. 
Mm, we can use also the Vivarian plots. Uh, this is especially useful for the products that are uh, selling sizes. So in that way, we can use this information to optimize the um, accommodation of the population in, in the sizes. And finally, uh, we can create uh, digital mannequins from this, uh, representing a size or representing a target population to use it as a support doing the um, digital uh, creation of the product. And this uh, um, process of uh, this way of uh, designing uh, products that are uh, in contact with the human body, it's what we call a sustainable and ergonomic design of, uh, of products. So the generation of, uh, the, in the current context, the databases that we are using for the design of, uh, the design of these uh, products uh, are coming from uh, research and development surveys done in the past and around the world. Uh, here at the IBB, we have access to several of these uh, databases. Um, uh, once we have this data, we can apply the, the filters and uh, the filtering process uh, to select the, the target population in terms of age, geography, uh, gender, um, and so on, and to use uh, this specific data for, for the design process. Mm, process. The problem is um, that most of these surveys were gathered in uh, 2000, for example, 2010, and is starting to be in some way old, old. And there are surveys that are extremely expensive to gather. So, what I can see in a future use of uh, Nico ecosystem that I explained before is different environments when the individuals are gathering the, uh, creating the 3D body avatar and are uh, in, in, at home or in shops, in hospital, in companies, in sports centers, and then uh, to use, as, as I mentioned in the previous slide, this uh, data as a database for, for the design of new products. This, in this context, we are using live data that are self-produced and it's updated. Um, what we need to do is to assure the, the compatibility of the data in the different contexts and the interoperability of the data. And this was um, one of uh, the main objectives of the uh, body pass project and one of the ways that uh, we are where we did progress in this uh, project. So at the IBB, uh, we usually work with companies from different sectors uh, to improve the, the, the fitting and the, the ergonomic design of the products. Uh, until this moment, or, uh, we are working on this using the current context of using the databases that we have uh, from our research. And now we're going to present some examples of how we can take profit of this data and, and how we can uh, apply it in the design of products. So this is a summary of uh, the different uh, sectors of the different type of products that can be uh, can, can take advantage of uh, this uh, digital uh, anthropometric information. In healthcare, all the uh, products or orthotics and also um, the um, uh, medical devices to diagnose, to do a diagnostics or, or uh, to measure some um, um, biometric uh, signal uh, should be very uh, ergonomically de designed to, to, to do well this function. In the sector of uh, transport, also the seats and all the interfaces inside the cabin should be adapted to the shape and size of the population. 
in the context of, uh, of the home and the habitat uh, to enhance comfort. It's also very important to consider these metrics. And as mentioned before, uh, apparel and footwear, both are um, sectors that are investing from many years in using digital anthropometry to improve the, um, the fitting of the product in the workplace, uh, the environment and, and also the interfaces are, are, should be designed properly. And in the sector of consumer electronics that especially we need to consider that most of uh, these devices are made with a hard uh, material, uh, difficult to deform and with minimal pieces adjusted to a, a small body parts of, uh, of the body. So it's important also to, to understand which is the, the, the shape and, uh, and, and size of, of the population to, 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 do it, to do it properly. Uh, this is one of the examples of uh, how to optimize the size spine in, uh, in uh, the clothing industry. This is an example for shirts. And uh, here the uh, objective it is to, uh, to cover or to accommodate the maximum percentage of population uh, using the minimal number of sizes and considering the variability of our target market. Uh, we can go from sizing tables and numerical tables, then Vivarian plots to to define the, the, the sizes and the grading, and then uh, digital mannequins that uh, can be used the, later on in the patterning process. Uh, especially in the case of uh, trousers in some garments, but especially in the case of trousers, not, it's uh, not only important the, the size and the dimensions to, to obtain a good fitting product, we need also to consider the body shape and the proportions to uh, achieve a good fitting. So this is a work that we did with a company uh, to increase the, uh, the range of sizes, considering also the, the, the shape of uh, the body in, uh, in the design of uh, the tricers covering more, um, more percentage of uh, to increase the coverage and the percentage of population uh, fitted with uh, this system. And in this slide, I would like to uh, emphasize the importance of uh, uh, considering the uh, population that we are addressing with our product. Mm, in this case, we can see for uh, 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 avatars with the same bust gears and hip gears, bust gears of 92 centimeters, hip gears of 100 uh, centimeters. And we can see uh, that the shape of the body uh, with this, uh, the same measurements, the shape of the body is different. If we are looking uh, the uh, the avatars, the average avatars from an uh, age range from 16 to 34, and um, we compare with an age range of 55 from 65 years old. So in a market context when uh, in context where companies are going to a specific target markets, markets more um, target populations, uh, more and more uh, concentrated in a specific age range. So it's important to uh, know uh, which is the variation of dimensions and body shapes in order to, uh, to fit as much as possible uh, the, our customers. And this is an example of, example of application for the children's wear uh, industry. In the case of children, in the case of adults, it's uh, typically to use life models during the development process to test uh, prototypes of the garment and to check that the patterns are fitting well. And in the case of children, this is more difficult. So it's not uh, the use of life models. It's, it's not 
uh, possible. So most of the companies are using uh, mannequins to test uh, the fitting of the garment. And the, the mannequins uh, uh, used in the past were mannequins that are matching the dimensions, the main dimensions uh, for its uh, age. And in this case, the sizes of the garments are, are managed by, by age, uh, label by age. But uh, if we see the, the, the shape of the mannequins, and uh, in particular different sections like chest, waist, and hip, the shape are not, uh, of these uh, mannequins are not realistic. So what we did is based on an anthropometric survey uh, of uh, children, we develop new mannequins for its age, um, creating uh, realistic shapes that help better in a better way the process of uh, product development. Um, in the health sectors, the design of orthotics is uh, one of uh, the products that uh, medical devices that requires the shape of the body to be well fitted. Uh, of course, here we have two, uh, two lines. One is the customization. And in that case, we need to uh, scan the individual person. But there are also many of many um, uh, products that are sell, sell um, in sizes for the mass market. And then we need to adapt all the sizing on uh, the measurements uh, to, the, to the shape of the bodies. Uh, in this case, we are not working with the whole body shape. We are also working with a, with a body part. And also in that case, we can create specific measures for this type of products. So then we need uh, a set of gears in different parts of uh, the leg. Uh, we use some of these dimensions as primary uh, dimensions to uh, set up the sizing. And you can see the Vivarian plots there with the variability and the coverage of each size. And then additionally, we have the sizing table to uh, to use it in, in the design of the other components uh, of the of the system. As I mentioned uh, the before the work, uh, mm, the factory and the safety in the workplace. It's also a um, sector where anthropometry it's required and it's been used. Um, in the last year, uh, the use of exoskeleton uh, became popular in uh, in the helping the, the 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 worker in in the performance of tasks when they should carry uh, different loads. These robots are supporting part of the loads and are minimizing the musculoskeletal disorder risks in. Uh, in these situations. Uh, this kind of devices should be very uh, fitted, very well fitted to the body in order to do, assure that all the loads are uh, progressing in, uh, in the body and are transferred to the body properly in uh, the musculoskeletal uh, structure of the body and we need also to avoid some movement, relative movements between the exoskeleton and the body. Just to be sure that uh, all during all the movement, uh, carrying the loads, uh, the position is uh, firmly attached uh, to the person. And in that case, we did a project for a company to also create the. Um, sizing, uh, uh, the, the, the best number of sizing, the optimized number of sizing, and the, re the reference models, the 3D body models to support uh, the design uh, process. And other type of products that uh, the fitting is very relevant, it's the wearables. 
uh, in that in this case we are putting a sensor in a, a garment or in a footwear and we need that this a, a good location of the sensor to assure that we are measuring the the right uh, biometric um, signal and also to assure that the pressure of the sensor um, over the body it's uh, it's good to capture this uh, this uh, biometric measure properly so this is an, an example of one t-shirt with a um, L with a sensor to measure the uh, the electric signal of the heart and uh, in that case we need to consider which were the parts of the body where we are assuring a contact between sensor and body so we analyzed uh, in different body types for uh, men and also for women which are the parts of uh, the torso when we are uh, also having a contact between the tissue and, and, and the body. We analyzed also the um, um, elasticity of, uh, of the t-shirt just um, to know and to understand uh, uh, the fitting, uh, the range of fitting that we can assume uh, in, in its size. And we also analyze the variability of the population to, to know uh, with um, the stretching and the elasticity of the material and the study of contact areas, uh, how many sizes we need to create to cover uh, the maximum percentage of population in, in different uh, target uh, markets. One was uh, export uh, for export application, uh, more young, it was addressed more for young people. And in the case of uh, an application for um, uh, medical problems, uh, we address also senior people with more uh, age. And uh, this is uh, the example of. Um, uh, if earphone design and sizing. So the earphones, it's um, a very small device that should be uh, fitted in the ear cavity and the variability of this, sh this shape among the population, it's quite high and it's difficult to achieve good fitting with this kind of product. So here we did a small uh, survey uh, studying the, the shape of uh, this cavity uh, we did also the extraction of the measurements and the study uh, of a shape analysis to see how the shape and si size of this uh, part of the body change. And we analyze with uh, dimensions of the internal size of the ear are uh, um, changing with correlations and which are uh, not correlated. So this is important to decide with the parts of the system are going to be uh, changing in each size and which parts or dimensions of the of the product are we going to maintain it for, for, for all the all the sizes and in this case we did also an analysis of uh, of how this uh, device is fitted in the ear we using a um, microtomography uh, system, and you can see that in 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 that case, the uh, holes of the speaker are not very uh, optimized, uh, um, are not oriented to the ear channel, and in that way, um, it was a study done uh, five or six years ago, and uh, there were different. They were different studies done around uh, the world in, in, in this type of products. And after this kind of uh, um, project, uh, we could see a evolution of uh, the design of these products from the traditional speaker to uh, the new one 
that are more um, oriented to the ER channel. Uh, in the sector of uh, automotive sector, they, they are using digital human models for many years, uh, not only for the ergonomics, also for the safety in uh, crash tests. Um, they are usually texting uh, the, 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 um, the car with uh, not only with average, um, but also they are um, using boundary mannequins, ex extreme body shapes, uh, in order to assure that uh, the behavior and the comfortability of the cabin is uh, assured for all the variability of, of the population. And in this context, we can use uh, synthetic avatars that can be created with uh, this percentage using the stream, stream values, or we can create uh, use uh, real avatars if we are want to match uh, or to combine this information uh, also with other uh, metrics like pressure distributions or perception of comfort. And during this year, especially during this year, due to the pandemic, there were many, many projects or many companies asking for a digital anthropometry of the face for the design of a face mask. And in this case, we were working in a face mask for a, a protective, uh, for protection, for a, a um, environment of a hospital with uh, that requires a high level of, uh, of protection. And in this case, the fitting of the mask to the face is very important because we need to avoid any hole or any area where the virus can, can, can enter. So we use our databases uh, of, of the head and face to check the variability of the main dimensions of the face and the main dimensions related to the fitting of the mask. And we use also um, digital uh, uh, cases to represent uh, different sizes of the masks and to use it in the uh, creation of, of the 3D model of these masks. Uh, the masks, these masks are, are, are done, manufactured with uh, uh, material that are not very flexible. Uh, we have also, of course, an interface with uh, a soft material, but, but the main part, uh, body of, uh, of the mask is from a hard material. Then it's important to know uh, how the topology of the face is uh, varying among the population in order to design this kind of uh, um, um, interface with the face adapted in a, in a best way uh, to the, these variations in the topology of, of, of the face. And finally, uh, I am going to, pre I have included also this, this example because here we are adding a, 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 an additional layer, which is the, the, the perception. Well, we have not only here the uh, body uh, the body metrics or the body shapes. We have also here uh, the perception of the fitting, and we are combining uh, both uh, information with uh, probabilistic tools to provide uh, size recommendations for for a uh, individual person. So um, this is. Uh, the problem of, of selecting a size uh, in footwear and also in, um, in the case of clothing, when we are buying on, online is sometimes a problem. Um, uh, there are many companies uh, working in uh, size recommendation uh, products. Um, uh, we did several studies uh, that uh, show that not only anthropometry is enough, we need to consider also preferences and perceptions to uh, provide a, a good uh, recommendation in, in this. So 
This okay. is a, a, a Sandra. Sorry, it's 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 time now. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> I, I'm going just to finish introducing the my last presentation. That uh, it's the the next. That is how to animate the body scans. So, is there any question? Um, we have one question, but if you can, please answer it uh, by by the question and answer box in Huba Huba application. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. See you in the next session. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.